We're just a couple days away from a major cold blast out east. Multiple winter storms look like they're getting ready to fire off across the plains, and models start to hint at a snowier mid-Atlantic as we get into the second week of December. It's November 24th, 2025. Let's get into the weather updates. The polar jet is beginning to collapse into the U.S., and over the next three to four weeks, we are expecting a very active winter pattern. So let's take a look at the latest. Who could see these winter storms in the short term, and who could see these winter storms in the medium range? Here's our six to 10 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Obviously very warm in the southeast, but our polar jet is beginning to buckle, bringing in a lot of this cold air. Now you'll notice as I go through this video, we're gonna see the chance for some ice storms through this region. And this just has to do with all of this warm air and cold air clashing here. We're gonna have some of that warm air trying to punch into the mid layers of the atmosphere as this cold air is funneling down into the states, picking up this moisture, and that's gonna elevate those ice chances. Pushing out to our eight to 14 day temperature forecast, we stay pretty warm in the southeast and we continue to stay cold in the plains and out west and then up there in New England as well. I will say at the end of this eight to 14 days though, we're gonna start to get colder out here in the mid-Atlantic and towards the eastern seaboard. This is just accounting for the beginning of that eight to 14 days. I really do think as we transition into the second and third week of December, we're gonna see a winter storm track that's gonna start to shift out towards the east. But we'll get to more of that a little bit later in the video. Before we get into our two week forecast, I also wanted to mention this large marginal to slight risk for severe weather down here today. This is gonna be through portions of eastern Texas, Louisiana, southern Arkansas, and then central Mississippi. And this does come with a tornado tornado threat. A pretty good size 2-5% to 5 risk zone for tornadoes. This does include portions of the Dallas-Fort Worth region. It's just to the northeast of San Antonio. Houston, you're in here as well. And then the majority of central to northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, and again, central Mississippi. These storms look to intensify through the afternoon and into the evening hours tonight. So again, make sure you have alerts on if you're out in this area. So just be aware that there's a nocturnal threat out here as well. Let's go over our most up-to-date model runs. You can see our severe threat down here pushing through the southern plains and then out east through Dixie. Alley. And if you look up in the northwest, there's our polar jet beginning to buckle. This is the beginning of our major pattern flip into a much more wintry type pattern that may come with some big snow and ice storms. Our first one right here as we get into Tuesday night and Wednesday morning is pushing right through the upper Midwest. Now, I do think this is going to bring some snow into Minneapolis. It may only be an inch or two. I believe we could see four to five inches on the high end, or we could even just see a half inch to an inch on the low end. These are the high end expectations from the National Weather Service. So you're seeing here three to five inches around Minneapolis, maybe a foot up towards Duluth, six to eight inches through Fargo, tons of snow for the UP of Michigan. And then this is gonna lead to some good lake effect snow for Western Michigan. The expected amount is a little bit lower, as you can see here, more like one or two inches for Minneapolis. And then those totals through the UP of Michigan, Northern Minnesota and North Dakota come down as well. But we're still seeing snow for everyone up here. Out ahead of this storm, we are gonna get some good rainfall for the Eastern seaboard. As we move forward in time, all of this very cold air is going to move right over the Great Lakes. And of course, this is going to trigger and enhance our lake effect snow. Northeastern Ohio, Northwestern PA out here towards Buffalo could get some good snow. Syracuse, Rochester, we'll have to see. Up towards Watertown, this could be some pretty good snow totals anywhere between six inches to a foot or more if you're lucky and you set up in one of those snow bands. Or unlucky if you don't like the snow. And then the mountains up here, Vermont and New Hampshire, look to get some good snowfall as well. Everything I just showed you was through the next 72 hours. This is Thanksgiving evening. We're cold out east. Again, that lake effect snow is falling in New England, western Michigan. And then we have another storm system setting up in the northwest here that's going to want to try and dive down actually into portions of the northern Ohio Valley or Midwest. So here we go, getting into the day after Thanksgiving and then the 29th and the 30th. You can see as we get into the 29th, we have some snow trying to form along our Bear Clinic zone here. And it is attempting to dive down towards the Ohio Valley here. Now we have a high pressure out to the east and we need a little bit more moisture here if we're gonna get any snow falling in St. Louis, Southern Illinois, maybe portions of Kentucky and Indiana. Pushing into the 30th, we start to get a ridge building up in the Central Plains. And we get a pretty decent snowstorm up here for portions of Nebraska, the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Northern Wisconsin. This could be some decent snow as well for portions of the Central and Northern Rock. And notice as we get into December 1st and this storm is moving up into the north and east, we have another low pressure system diving into the southwest here. I also want to point out we are seeing the possibility of an ice storm with this system as well. Pushing into next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that storm system begins to move off into the north and east. Now we will say there is the possibility that this system tries to stay a little bit farther south if we don't get that big ridge developing in the southern plains. So that's something we're going to have to watch. And by the way, we're going to have to watch severe weather through this time frame as well early next week. Getting into December 3rd, next Wednesday, we have all this cold air still sinking into the west and out towards the plains. We have a lot of moisture down here in the southeast, and we potentially have some more snowfall for the Rockies. And now we're getting a little bit farther out, but this is where the GFS wants to try and put together another snowstorm here. You can kind of see the way our polar jet is situated here, and this would be an opportunity for not just one, but two shots of snow out there in the mid-Atlantic. It's towards the end of the run, so we don't want to pay attention too much to it, but I've been talking about as we get into the second week of December, I think our chances for a snowstorm out in the mid-Atlantic and the coastal New England region are going to start 
start to go way up. Maybe it takes to the third week of December, but I do believe we'll see those opportunities with winter storms out east again as we push through December. And yes, there's a tropical system down here in the Caribbean, but we're not going to quite talk about that yet because it's a little too far out. We don't know if we're going to see this thing develop yet. What's our European model C? Same thing in the short term. There's our severe weather in the south. Here's our upper Midwest winter storm trying to put down some snow in the Dakotas, Minneapolis, portions of Wisconsin, the UP Michigan, and then there comes all that lake effect snow for Western Michigan and then inner New England. Cold air, of course, dives down. We are very cold for Thanksgiving throughout a lot of the country. We're going to look at the temperatures here in a second. Another storm system forms off to the northwest here the day after Thanksgiving. Same thing as the GFS. We're pretty much aligned up until this point. Here's where things get a little bit different. Getting into this weekend, the Euro thinks Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Des Moines, Chicago, Indianapolis, Detroit. This snowstorm is going to come right for you guys. So this is going to be a lot of snow for the Midwest, according to the Euro, or at least a decent amount of snow. And then you can see again, the Euro is going to try and kind of push a ridge up here and throw this storm off into the Northeast. I do still think there's the opportunity that this storm stays a little bit farther down to the South and kind of teases the Mid-Atlantic with snow, but we'll see. Models right now, again, do pick this up and throw it off into the Northeast. You can see as we move forward in time here, and then we're just really experiencing rain up and down the coast here and really for much of New England. We see more moisture funneling in into the southeast as we get into the middle of next week. And then we see another storm system up here for the Northern Rockies, Northern Plains, and Upper Midwest. Again, this area is gonna be pretty active with snow here over the next couple weeks, it looks like. Now notice what happens as we get into December 4th, December 5th, towards the end of the run here on the Euro. Some more lake effect snow is falling up here, but we are beginning to see our polar jet setting up the same way as the GFS, which could promote some snow out towards the Eastern seaboard. There's gonna be an opportunity here for a coastal mid-Atlantic or New England snowstorm. This isn't really a great nor'easter setup, but again, you start to see your opportunities here as we get farther through December, the European model sees that as well. Taking a look at our temperature anomalies moving forward, we're really hot right now. But again, as we move through the next couple of days, here comes all our cold air. This is Thanksgiving evening, and it is very cold for most of us across the country, except for the West is going to be in a little bit of a ridge, although this is expected to move out pretty quickly after Thanksgiving, as I said. Moving into the 29th, the 30th, that cold air is going to stick around for a little bit longer out East. But then as we get into early December, here comes that ridge. This is when we're going to get the opportunity for multiple ice storms, potentially across the plains, some severe weather out to the east and then potentially some good snow up here for the upper midwest northern plains and northern rockies we could see some of that nice snow in the central rockies as well for utah and colorado now as we push through the first week of december again that cold air tries to flatten out that ridge out east and really just hold it to the southeast there's our southeastern ridge and we're pretty cold from coast to coast according to the gfs the euro sees a version of this as well and with all this cold air again comes the opportunity for snowstorms really from coast to coast because you need two ingredients for a snowstorm you need the cold air and you need the moisture there the cold air looks to be a lock for a lot of us throughout the first half of December, if not throughout much of December. MJO phase eight, MJO phase one are very cold for a lot of the US, especially the plains and out east. Speaking of the MJO, we are still expected to enter into a phase eight as we push through December. Now, if we did enter a phase eight in mid-December, this is fantastic for some snow opportunities across the eastern US. As you know, when I've talked about this in a lot of my videos, phase eight and phase one tend to be pretty cold and snowy for much of the states, but especially out east. Here's our latest seasonal outlook from the Canadian. You can see it's expecting us to be very cold throughout December. December. Now, if you were to look at the NOAA December outlook, it actually has this area up the coast a little bit warmer. Although, as I said, I think it's because it's just taking into account the beginning of December. As we get into mid-December, late December, I do think up here along the eastern seaboard, specifically into the mid-Atlantic region, we're going to cool down quite a bit. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps the channel. I upload content like this every single day, and then after I post it, I get on and live stream to answer all of your weather-related questions. And if you want to become a member of the Climate Crew, the link to my my Discord is right down in the description. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video or in the live stream.